Welcome to the Self-Awareness and Self-Compassion Podcast, formerly known as the Full Spectrum Feeling Podcast. I'm your host, Blaise Schwaller, life coach, mom, and former tattoo artist. I help people heal their past, speak their truth, and love the lives that they're living now. Join me here every week for conversations on how to live an imperfect but fully engaged life that embraces all the feels so that you can stretch into your best life while enjoying the you that's here right now. Hello, friends. I want to talk this week about perceiving yourself with love and respect. It's something that we all strive for and then in certain moments, we find it extremely difficult. And I think that's life. We go through our days and stuff smacks us in the face. It gets really frustrating. And we go, oh my God, why is this happening to me? How can I fix it and make it better? And we forget to take that moment and take that pause and see ourselves as everything that we're capable of being. So I want to remind you this week about how much you have, how much you are already, and that you can tap into, particularly as we go into the holidays. A lot of people find this time of year so super stressful. I am not apart from this. There's just a lot going on. There's a lot of moving parts. There's family and holiday prep, and the season is changing up here. It's going from mildly cold to bitterly cold. Um, Daylight savings happened, which always throws me for a loop because there's so many holidays and interactions, there's illnesses just getting swapped here, there and sideways. And it's just a higher stress time of the year for most of us. And it's at the exact time when most of us have run out of resources, (laughs) where we're just really, really tired. And we wish this wasn't happening. And so I want to share with you some takeaways that I had from listening to Matt Kahn this past week. He had a loving meditation, um, a loving meditation. He always does that. A meditation on loving kindness and ways that we can talk to ourselves to create more harmony and more peace within. And I really appreciated it. And I wanted to pass that on. So he talked about what would it be like if we took a moment in the middle of thinking all of our crazy thoughts And instead of judging our thoughts or being mad at how we're thinking or the thoughts that we're having, because our thoughts are making us feel a certain way, right? Instead of getting angry to go, hello, my beautiful mind. And I went, oh, that's interesting. So he's like, well, just try it. Hello, my beautiful mind. And what's interesting about it is that we make the assumption then that our mind is beautiful rather than going, hello, my obnoxious mind. Hello, my stupid thoughts. I can't believe I'm thinking this. Like you can feel the difference in the way that that's spoken to go, hello, my beautiful mind, to just address yourself with that level of respect and assumption that you're there for the best. And it just instantly uplifts you a little bit and goes, oh yeah, my mind is brilliant. It's a beautiful mind. It's a bright mind. And my in my picturing of it, it's like looking at your little brain and your thoughts and enwrapping it in this beautiful golden light and going, ah, okay, this is a gift. It's something there to serve me. Maybe I can calm down. (laughs) And that actually leaves enough space for me to go, what did I get caught up in? How can I redirect that? Because the beauty of our mind, right, is that we can redirect it. It is there to follow whatever thread we put down so we can go, oh, it's a beautiful mind. I'm going to feed it something beautiful. What could I in this moment serve myself in order to improve the quality of my experience right in this moment? What would be most beautiful? What could I change this thought to? What could I assume about whatever situation is going on that improves the way that I experience it? Mm, that feels marvelous. And I highly recommend. So if you're going through your week this week and things have gotten out of hand in a few times or more than a few times in a day, your thoughts get uppity and you get caught like we all do in just the same cycle of this needs to happen. That needs to happen. What's going on. We can halt ourselves by going, wait, my mind is beautiful. If my mind is beautiful, do I need to rehash every single item on my list that needs doing? Or can I trust myself that it's going to work out okay? What could I do right now and take an action that could improve this whole experience? For me, it's often just taking a moment to write things down if I've gotten caught in a loop and I think I'm going to somehow forget the 50 things that I find very important in that moment. And to me, it's very soothing to do that. 
So if you find it soothing to take a note and write it down or do a journal, please take a hold of that and use it as a safety net or a lifesaver right now. Get all of the thoughts out and recognize that, you know, it's okay. (laughs) Our thoughts, they shape our experience of a moment, but they, they're ephemeral. They're not real. You can have mean thoughts. They don't necessarily mean anything. You don't have to follow through on them. That is the beauty of our mind, right? So you can look at it and go, wow, thanks for showing me that that's where I've gotten caught. Now I'm going to do something proactive to lift myself out of it. And in the meantime, rather than judging myself as being bad or not good in some way for whatever is going on, I'm going to address myself with kindness and respect and say, hello, my beautiful mind. Mm, So good. The next aspect that he talked about was our hearts. And he says, hello, my beautiful heart. And I, I think he said precious heart, actually. And there's something really nice about the word precious that makes you want to take care of something. And how often do we just forget our hearts completely, or we put it off to the side. So I think a lot of the stress of this portion of the season is feeling like our own needs are getting neglected because we're so busy planning and doing stuff for other people. And we have a lot of obligations. And then there's Christmas parties and all kinds of stuff happening at work, happening with friends, decorations. It feels like we're constantly struggling to keep up And it's like our heart just keeps getting trampled on in the process. So to be able to come gently towards ourselves and say, oh my gosh, I have this precious heart. And maybe it's been feeling neglected. It's been feeling tired. It just needs some appreciation and acknowledgement. And as soon as you're able to address yourself as, oh, I have a precious heart. It's precious. I should be showering myself with kindness. And it's important that I take time for myself. It's important that I treat myself as kindly as I would my kid or my husband or my best friend or my dog, whatever it is. You want to treat yourself as though you too are precious, that the things that you want are also important to just have that moment to remember that. And when you do, I find it's like an automatic, gentle little smile happens where I'm like, oh yeah, that's, I needed that. We all need that. Hello, my precious heart. The next experience that we all have is of our bodies, that we have these bodies. And for so many of us, we're dealing with pain, inconvenience, just things that aren't working the way we wanted. Illness has been such a huge part of all of our lives, particularly over the last few years. We're all very intimately acquainted with that kind of suffering And to look at our bodies and instead of going, this is terrible, how awful, I'm not enjoying this, to instead take a moment and say, I have a miraculous body. It's breathing. (laughs) Here I am. Like, I don't think about that. It's happening automatically. I'm capable of healing. The body is actually geared to heal itself. And I have this miraculous body. If I give it space, it can do that job better. And I want to give it that. And even if my experience isn't what I wish it was. If it's not what it was years ago, it's not how my ideal is. It's still a miracle that I inhabit a body at all, that I'm here in this moment in time. Isn't that incredible? When you ponder that vastness and are able to go, you know, even though I'm experiencing this frustrating thing, there's a lot of amazing things happening. Like if you're able to see how amazing that you can see If you're able to hear and listen, how amazing that you have that sense. If you're able to move around and pick things up, how wonderful that you're able to do that. And to really break it down for yourself into these categories of broad experience that most of us are able to experience in some way, shape, or form, that you're able to perceive this podcast somehow. It's incredible. How cool. And your body is allowing you to do that. So we have this beautiful mind and a precious heart and a miraculous body. And then he took it further to go, what if you then expanded it out to others to say, hello, my awakening and expanding world. And I really loved that because there's so much distrust and frustration out in the general vibe. 
we're all scared and frustrated. We're worried about the climate and war and people and just all of the things, the economy, our jobs. Nobody is feeling particularly safe right now. But to instead of looking out and seeing fear and things to be scared of, to look out and go, what if the world, what if I assumed that it was awakening and expanding? What if I treated it as though that's available for me and for everybody? How could I show up? And how much more peaceful do I then feel in my precious heart? If I look out and go, despite what I see, what if everything is getting better? What if it is expanding? What if there is expansiveness available for me? What if there's awakening joy available for me and for all of us? All of that is very, very soothing. And when Matt Kahn was giving his meditation, he really has a very soothing voice. And he said, you know, it is thank you for serving me. It is you who I serve. And he had a bunch of repetitions of that. And I appreciated that too, because it reminds you, I don't know, there's something soothing about the give and take, like a wave of this thing is serving me and then I'm serving it and it's serving me and I'm serving it just like an in-breath and an out-breath. And that's something that we all can experience and it's very calming And I think we all could use some calm and joy right about now. So how do you currently perceive yourself when you're in moments of stress? What would it be like if you took a moment to pause and went through almost like a little litany of, hello, my beautiful mind. Hello, my precious heart. Hello, my miraculous body. Hello, my awakening and expanding world. And I want to take a moment here to say that when you're in an awakening and expanding world, the experience of it is often disruptive. When things are waking up, like things are in flux, they're changing. So what if instead of assuming that all the fluctuations and things that we perceive right now is very terrifying and upsetting, if we just perceive them as a change, could we do that? And how would it change how we all show up? Could we show up with more expectation for a positive outcome and for a positive way of ourselves showing up, could we leave space for that? And could we appreciate ourselves a little bit more? And I think that we can, and I would love to see that. Mm, My friends, I wish for you to really resonate into the awesomeness that is you, to remember that you are worthy of respect, worthy of peace, worthy of a moment to just take that breath, take that moment, and to feel, and to uplift yourself. And I wish for you many, many moments in the coming weeks, months, and years that you slow down, remember how miraculous this whole situation is, that we're even here, (laughs) and appreciate that you have this capability of showing up in a different way in every moment. So no matter what's happened in the past, in any given moment, you can snap your fingers, show up differently and say, today, right now, in this moment, I remembered suddenly that I have this capacity for love and for peace and for change and for joy and to give that to yourself and give it to everyone around you. May you have an excellent week and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and share it with someone you love and leave us a review. You can learn more and get some self-compassion tips and tricks by visiting coachwithblaze.com where you can sign up to get my free booklet on overcoming anxiety, overwhelm, exhaustion, and burnout. I'm sending you so much appreciation and love and I'll see you next time.